Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is a showreel. I think it's a really good introduction to the breadth and depth in which we approach branding and how we see, what we see branding as, because I think we've got a slightly different viewpoint. We've had that viewpoint for a long time, and we got to the point now where we don't even really talk about it as cross-media or, or any of those things. It's just the way it is. I'd encourage you all to think, think about your individual discipline, but always be looking left and right for other things you could be doing creatively, because really it's just about being creative, and that's kind of what clients want. The established branding and advertising silos are no longer relevant. In a fast-moving world, a business has to change and adapt, and so must its brand. We're striving to set a new benchmark in creativity and its power to transform business. On one hand, it's sort of uber design, let's call it. So uh, we're, we're trading the graphic designer route. But on the other hand, we're making spatial, des spatial uh, designs, we're making environmental or like interactive pieces. It's a bit like having a whole college in one place, really, uh, with l not necessarily all of those disciplines, but lots of that thinking happening that's working in quite a siloed way while you're at college, but in a completely unsiloed way in, 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 the real, in the real world. We talk about what we do as creativity for a moving world. If you're going to design a brand, if you're going to come up with you know, the new brand for an amazing product, let's go at it where we're thinking about all the different aspects of how that brand's gonna actually be touched. We basically started it straight out of college, so I wouldn't necessarily advise this, <laughs> but it worked well for us that we came out of college and we looked around us and there were brilliant design and branding agencies and there were these new agencies that were doing things like CD-ROMs. I'm showing my age here now. There wasn't really anything out there that was sort of putting a front foot forwards and saying that they did all of that stuff or indeed that that stuff was going to be really, really important and that's the way we should be thinking about it. If you're going to design a brand, if you're going to design a logo, you shouldn't be designing it for how it's going to look on the side of a car and on a, and on a letterhead and a business card and the ways that the branding agencies, let's call them, were designing brands. But it wasn't broad enough for us. We come out of a college, Central St. Martins in London, that was very broad. You know, we were doing photography and making film and design and there was an advertising part of the module and there was all this kind of like real mashup of stuff. And it seemed to us that really what clients needed was creativity. They're really good at making products. They're really good at running businesses. They're really good at um, engaging advertising agencies to sort of convince us that the products are good. But in terms of brand and design and how design can actually be part of a business, more recent examples like Apple was always sort of dished out as a really brilliant example of where creativity and brilliant product and brilliant business acumen all, all sort of collide together and make something special. I'd encourage you to think about what clients really need is somebody or something or a group of people to be ambassador of creativity for their business. You can be that slightly edgy, uh, crazy, um, creative person in that mix, but actually ultimately make the biggest difference because everyone else is saying all the same things and you're the person in there saying something really different. We decided that we had enough money for one laptop and just enough money to pay for like a, uh, you know, one month's rent on a space. Because we thought having a space would make us more serious about what we were trying to do. It would also give us a point of antagonism. You know, in four more weeks, we had to have enough money to pay the rent again. We met someone from Sky Sports. One of the guys saw our end of year show and sort of said, oh, that, you guys, can you guys make TV? And we all just went, yeah. And then we're quite innovative, so we're always doing what we think are really interesting things. I remember when processing first came out, we were really playing with that and trying to work out how we could design identities using processing, so they were data-driven and all kinds of nice stuff. And then when you see projects like Swisscom, you can kind of see some of the results of that play, so the Swisscom identity. We're, we're just as geeky as we are um, design-led, and I think that's also a good thing, because we're always looking for what we can bust next, what we can break open, what we can reprogram, what might we learn from that. And that's why you see us doing our own sort of projects, which don't seem to make much sense. But then you'll normally see that a few months later, there'll be a project for a client that's kind of used what we've learned to deliver it as a real thing. If you get your story right, and you really understand what your story is as a business, so while your employees come in every day, 
what the hell it is you're trying to do in the world. Why do you exist as a business? What's special about you? What's unique about that thing? You need that. If you don't have that, you really don't have much. We say, if you get that right, and then if you go all the way to the other end and you just say, what do people need? What do they want? How are they gonna interface, understand, and use that story? Branding is easy, it's just the lines in between. It's just the systems you need to make to join those two things up. So as designers, you know, if you can become expert in storytelling and you can become expert in understanding what people need, then you can make and design anything because you, you're just problem solving how to join those two things up. And that, that's kind of similar to what entrepreneurs do. You know, they see an opportunity, they have a story, something that's a good idea, but how's, how are they going to relate that to people? We define a story at the heart of the brand, you know, the Nike just do it. So it's something that everyone carries around in their back pocket and they understand that whatever products we make, however we pivot and change our ap appreciation of our own products, however we go out in the world, this story is always going to be true about us. They haven't necessarily sat down and said, what are we? Why do we exist? And why is that relevant to people? Then once we've defined that, we say, right, you need a brand identity, digital first. The next thing is like digital products and services and service design. So actually, how does the product really come to life and how does that work? And then once you've got that ready, then it's all about, okay, now how do we stick that out in the world? What's the website going to be like? What's marketing going to be like? Traditional branding, as I, as I still see it, was kind of a bit here, and then it skipped all of this, and then it went straight to here, like, what's the advertising going to be like? How are things going to look? So this is the sort of valuable stuff right now. If you can do all of that, there's a lot of work to be won. Challenge yourself to think about, well, why, why is this a book? <laughs> and c couldn't this go to market in a different way? And how could I tell the client that without annoying them, but what help sort of tell the story of how that might be a better experience for them or make a better product. Anyone that can design something, make it move, and then program it even better. I think over the last 12 months, we've done something like eight startup brands, which is quite a lot. We've done a whole lot of others. So I remember the conversations about, well, people will never spend more than $100 online, and people will never spend more than 1000 and then someone else sold a house, and then someone does this, and now you've got things like Blackjet. So we think about, you know, good design is good business, and this was said way, way back. In order to have a good business, you have to have good design, or at least have design high on your agenda in, or, in order to get these things to happen. Design thinking and good design is a massive differentiator in the market. Think about TVs. What differentiates one TV from another? Nothing. Not a thing. Brand, big difference. The way it's marketed, big difference. The logo that's on it, big difference. People do buy things. People are persuaded by these these changes. I mean, these guys are battling it out like mad for something that's unique, something that's different, something that really resonates with people, something that's easy to use, something that's connected, something that's how can we solve this from an ease of use but also how can we make sure that people know it's us and it's our brand and we, we're the ones that have solved this problem. And Made Fire is the smashing together of two worlds. Instead of making something for print and then making it digital afterwards. Let's actually make stories with characters in them and story worlds that are conceived to work in this platform straight away. And this is part of the challenge we have as, as designers to re keep reminding our clients that, remember all that work we did? That's still relevant. Maybe let's, all, let's have a look at it again and, and see, see how it can really still come to life. Right now, you, if, you're, um, if you're in the inner circle, you can go onto the Made Fire website and log into the tool and actually start creating these motion books. I mean, they're a startup. This stuff's really important. When, they, when these guys go out, they look like a tribe. Every time you're in a pub with them all, they've all got Made Fire. It's quite nice that Made Fire had been sort of featured quite a lot by Apple. They, they really love it. Nest is the food recommendations app. But the reason I want to show you this film because it kind of shows our process, turn those workshops into proper bits of thinking, defining the story, taking that story, making that into three or four different routes to present to the client to finally get down to one route, to then make that one route actually come to life and then start to make everything. This sort of film shows all of that. You can see how you, from story all the way through to actually how the product works. 
we find that trying to do it in less than a quarter, so less than three months, any brand is, is just too quick. Some of the big ones we've done, which I've not really shown, like uh, the HP work and some of the work that we did for Swisscom takes more like a year and a half. To, but it's different every time. Sometimes we're going really deep. We're actually building websites. We're actually building apps. But other times we're kind of showing a picture of what that would look like and then working with their team to realize it. In a, even in a small project that lasts maybe three months, a good third of that at the beginning, maybe even longer, is all research and getting to know them as a business and the ways that they're going to market currently, how their competitors are going to market, what's working, what's not working, doing assessments on those things, talking to key stakeholders, talking to CEOs, talking to customers to really find out really what's happening and where things resonate. And with that information, with that data, you can build a really compelling reason for why change is a good option or not. We talked about it as like frictionless design was the way we were talking about it with them as a client. That really helps sell it in. Because, you know, selling something that looks like that, <laughs> it's a bit kind of like, well, what are you guys done? I could have done that. And so, but, but by giving it parameters, talking about it as frictionless design and coming at it from, this is the new luxury, is like sort of like invisible immediacy. It kind of got them hooked and that, that, that was great. And then this is Swisscom I, and I, I've tried to, tried to show this with as least amount of slides as possible because as I say we've been working with them for the best part of five years now. Um, I don't have the before slide but they looked really boring before we got hold of them. Um, they did fixed line telephony. Over 10 years they'd added Wi-Fi and, and broadband and you could get like on-demand TV and movies through their system and they could do all your email. You could upload all your, uh, upload all your photos. It's basically your whole digital life in one place. So the idea with this, Mark, was, all, it was about this idea of a central spine with all your content that can kind of billow out and kind of be represented. And th this was a logo that we built in processing, so it actually reacts to data and it does all kinds of cool stuff. And then obviously there's also an abstracted Swiss flag in there and the lakes and mountains of Switzerland, which they, the client loved. It's a bit like our FedEx Arrow story that we had no idea lakes and mountains were in this thing until the client went, lakes, mountains, that's really Swiss. And we were like, yeah. We have clients where we give them pens and we go, go on then, show us what you mean. Because they're talking about, you know, we are this amorphous digital thing. And they, they, you know, they're, they're kind of describing the logo, or at least the way they think about the shape of the business and what it's all about. And there are lots of this going on in the workshops. And, and we give them pens and then we have either designers sat with them as well. And they're kind of like going, you know, like this. And we sort of design on the fly. Really dangerous things. You know, there's lots of arguments for showing the client something too early and all that kind of stuff. But we find that if you involve the client as much as possible, they think they designed it. They think they came up with it. They think they came up with a story. That means they sell it like mad in their own organization because they're not selling something somebody else has done. It's too easy for you to give something over to a client and they go, right, we'll present it, our CEOs, you, you know. And they present it and as soon as the CEO goes, I don't like that, what the hell are you doing they just buckle and say oh, we didn't do it it was the design agency and you, you know you're you're dead but if you make them feel like they did it then suddenly they're in the meeting going arguing with the ceo or trying to convince the ceo that it's a good idea because they feel like it's an idea they had but this idea that as designers we know something that other people don't know I, I'd, I'd say just that might be true but i'd say lose it lose that kind of way of attacking the world because it's, it's not that useful to go through the world that way because it's too easy to go well a client doesn't understand they're never going to get what we're trying to tell them in terms of typeface. They're never going to understand why I think this color's good and they don't like it. But you're not going to get very far like that. It's much better to work with them to try and get something that, that, that happens. The other thing is if you make a mistake, if they go with your design and it isn't very good, you're okay. You know, the worst that's going to happen to you is, oh, we designed that thing and we're not going to talk to people about it because it wasn't very successful. They lose their jobs, you know, in some cases, you know. They make a bad decision, they're head of marketing, sales go down, they're out. With these guys, we, were, we helped them with the name, we helped them with the brand, we helped them with the identity, the story, also all the UI, UX, and everything else in between. And we also did all the photography, we've also made all the videos that are on their website. If you have the knowledge and you talk the right language, you convince a client to let you do all of those bits, which means you get something really succinct and really kind of lovely looking. And whether you like the design or not, the consistency across it all is... Uh, is a thing I'm really, really proud of. If Only is another recent one which isn't really on our website. Um, they got a really interesting product where they are allowing people to go online and you can do things like um, buy a tweet from Justin Bieber to send to your brother because your brother's really into Justin Bieber. 
or you can buy around the golf with Tiger Woods. It's also got a philanthropic angle to it. So that personality can say 100% of this is going to go to charity or they can say 50% or 10% is going to go to my you know, foundation, all those sort of things. As digital as we are, we always stick everything on the boards all the time. It's a digital world and all that, but we still got to print it out and get it up on the wall. Cause it, and it's basically, if it's not on the board, it doesn't exist. And there are these boards full of all kinds of stuff. And right at the bottom, there was this little typographic experiment that she'd done where she basically just made the if and only so close that it almost made this little key motif. And I was kind of like, whoa, what's that bottom right? It's kind of really, really lovely. So this idea that they're unlocking experiences that you wouldn't necessarily be able to have. And then this is something uh, new as well. It's called Inadco. It's going to be out on the website. Actually, this is all live now as well. So the easiest way to describe it is when you do a search engine, uh, you know, search something in a search engine, you get a load of results. And then down the side, sometimes you get ads and all kinds of stuff. Well, they've worked out a way to put a form, an ad-based form in the search result itself. So if you search car insurance, when, a, when Farmers comes up, for example, instead of it coming up in, as a search result and then being a link which takes you to Farmers, actually in the search result, it's got lots of drop downs where you can just go, okay, I've got a Toyota Corolla 2004, what's the quote? And it, and it does it in the search engine. This is actually the brand narrative that we wrote for them, which is that they're all about the new value ad, but ad obviously being an ad rather than an ad, other than an ad, you know, an ad with a, this is a joke. We've just done a new thing using um, the Connect, which is this thing, um, which is a music video for Duolog. 